happy girl. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another podcast of Women at the Well Ministries, where we believe that all of us have to come to Jesus like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Our highest priority is making God real in your life. Whether you are listening in our app, in your favorite podcasting app, or on our website at watwm.org, we invite you to sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen your daily walk with Jesus Christ. Living a life for Christ, she's a happy girl. The book of Joshua is rich in lessons to be learned regarding how to be successful in this battle we call life. Today, we explore the account of Rahab following closely after last week's account of Joshua becoming the leader of Israel. We explore how Rahab was honored for her obedience to the Lord. Join Kim Miller in this podcast of Women at the Well Ministries as she takes us on a journey through the scriptures, making the lessons necessary for this life as found in the book of Joshua come alive. As we continue, In the book of Joshua, I'd like to pull out two of the lessons in chapters two through three, and then picking back up again in six, that I believe shows us the fulfillment of how God keeps his promises and how the power of God is unleashed in a life that submits themselves to his direction and his word. I'd like to bring to your attention Joshua chapter 2. And we read in Joshua chapter 2 the story of Rahab. And what happens is, as we begin to look at Rahab and what God is asking of Rahab and what God is asking of the spies, we come to the place where, where Joshua has sent two spies over into Jericho, and they're trying to determine the strength of the army that they have been told by God they're going to face and have to defeat. And so we pick up in Joshua chapter 2, and we see that he says in verse 1, And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out, whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had actually brought up the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way of, to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord have given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites and were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man. Because of you, For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now, therefore, I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have 
and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business. And it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with them. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, that thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whatsoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head if any hand be upon him. And that's the covenant the two spies made with Rahab. Here's what I want you to hear from this account in Joshua chapter 2. Your witness goes before you. If you look at Joshua 2 verses 9 through 11, she was telling them that the people in Jericho were afraid of the Israelites and the Israelites had not even set foot in their city. They had heard of the greatness of God through what God had done through the Israelites, how he had parted the Red Sea, how he had destroyed these other cities. Word of God's work in their life had spread abroad, giving God all honor and glory. This leads me to believe we need to look at our lives. We are painting a picture of who God is with every move we make, every word we say, everything that we do. If we claim the name of Christian, we are saying we are Christ-like and our actions are painting a picture to a lost and dying world of who Christ is. We need to make sure we paint the right picture. Your life is a witness whether you choose for it to be or not. I want you to see in Joshua 2, 12 through 14, that many are saved because of Rahab's belief. What Rahab does affects her mother, her brothers, her father, her household. How you lead your life affects those around you. If you are living God in your home, if you are breathing God in your home, if you are singing God in your home, if you are quoting his word in your home, if you are making priority for God in your home, the people in your home will be bathed and soaked with who God is. And God says his word will not go void. God says that if you lift him up, he'll draw all men unto him. And I promise you, as you speak of God, his power will draw others. Do you remember the centurion guard? He was saved in his household. Now each person has to come to know Jesus as personal savior. That is true. But let me tell you, When you speak about something that amazing, it's contagious. People want what you have. But if you walk around looking like you've been baptized face forward in pickle juice, nobody wants what you have. But Rahab wanted to let the people know, let the spies know, we've heard about you Israelites. And we're afraid of you because what God has done in you. And then she wanted her family to be saved. Because she trusted in what these spies would say. I want you to notice that it's no accident that she said to have them hide three days. And it was a scarlet rope. I believe that Rahab is a picture of Jesus. I believe that the scarlet rope is a picture of his blood. The only redemption for our sins. In John chapter 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is the only way to Jesus. 
In Hebrews, we learn that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. In John chapter 3 and verse 16, we learn that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not be, should not perish, but would have everlasting life. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus was the only propitiation for our sins. There were three men on the cross, but only one rose again. I don't care how much you love someone. You can't save them, and you can't be saved for them, and you can't believe for them. But you can definitely be like Rahab. You can live a life that brings them along with you, that they taste and see that the Lord is good. In Joshua chapter 2 and verse 24, it reads this. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. That's the report the spies give back. God had delivered this Jericho country into the hands of the Israelites. God is still delivering you from your problems today. He's in the midst of your storm. He's in the midst of your trial. He's in the midst of your pain. And he's the balm of Gilead. He's the great physician. He's the great I am. But you have to reach out to him. You have to invite him into your situation. And you have to trust in him with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Depart from evil. Fear him. We see Rahab let down the scarlet rope, a symbol of the blood of Jesus. The spies hid three days, and on the third day they emerged. A picture of the crucifixion, death, and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because in Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5, he says this, And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. This is Joshua coming to the Jordan. This is about where we're getting ready to head into the account of the walls of Jericho falling down. He is preparing for the miracle that God is doing. He's believing because God has said to him, you're going to go in and you're going to march around that wall. And for the first six days, you're going to blow trumpets and you're not going to say a word. But on the seventh day, you're going to go around that wall seven times. And on that seventh time, you're going to shout and you're going to blow and the walls are going to come down. But today he's telling you to sanctify yourself for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I wonder how many of us have learned what Joshua is telling us. And this account to sanctify ourselves because great things are coming. See, Joshua makes a way where there is no way. In Joshua chapter 3, verses 13 and 17, he says, And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Jesus makes a way where there is no way. He hid the spies and he made deliverance for Rahab and her family. He parted the Red Sea. He's parting this Jordan River. He's going with the ark of the covenant before them. And Joshua's preparing the people for the miracle because he's say and sanctify yourself for tomorrow God's going to do wonderful things. How many of us are sanctifying ourselves today for God's going to do wonderful things for us tomorrow? How come he can't do wonderful things tomorrow? Because perhaps we have not sanctified ourselves. Maybe we haven't gone back to Joshua 1 and heard the word of the Lord and submitted ourselves and stood strong and courageous. But instead, we've looked left and we've looked right. 
And like Peter, we sunk because we take our eyes off Jesus. But like Peter, Jesus pulled him up and he drew him to his chest and he took him safely to the boat. We can do that today because 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And Joshua is rich with its lessons. He tells us that following God in the smallest details to adhering to what he says, it, it matters because he marched around Jericho and in Joshua 6, 1 through 17, he tells him exactly what to do. And when he does it, the walls come tumbling down. God kept Rahab's promise because in Joshua chapter 6, verses 21 through 23, this is what he says. It's amazing what he says. He says, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep, and ass with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house and bring out fence the woman and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and their brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all their kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. He delivered her. What I want you to see was Rahab wasn't an important government official. Rahab wasn't even a person, no doubt, that was sitting at the foot of God. She just knew God when she saw him. She was a harlot. She made her money in a sinful, wicked way. But Jesus went to where she was and she brought him to where she is. And just like the woman at the well in John chapter four, she said, come see a man who showed me all things ever I've done. Is not this the Christ? From Joshua to John, from Genesis to Revelation and every place in between. The word of God speaks of grace and mercy. It demonstrates love and it demands that you follow. Submit yourself under the mighty hand of God and allow him to exalt you in due time. God kept his promise to Rahab and he rewards Joshua for the work of the Lord. In Joshua 6.25, it says this, Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had and she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy us out of Jericho. Jesus always rewards faithfulness and he is always faithful to forgive, to equip, to call, and to reward. And the book of Joshua gives us an account after an account after an account, not only how to live a successful life, but the reward for obedience. First Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Friends, I have just covered the very surface of Joshua. But I have given you that which God has given me, which is the thing of how to live our lives, the model to show humanness and how it can do great things when a mere mortal walks in the power and the might and the strength of Jesus Christ. I've shown you he's no respecter of persons. And the scriptures has revealed his undying love for you. What will you do today in response to the knowledge that submission is God's requirement for a successful life? Oh, my friends, today is the day to dig your heels in. Stand for Jesus. Allow him to fill you with his grace and his mercy and follow unwaveringly that which he's called you to do. Remember, you are loved. Jesus loves you.
Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. You can visit the show notes for quotes from today's podcast and scripture references. We pray today has been a blessing, and we encourage you to reach out to us through our app, our website, or our Facebook page. You can find our app by searching for Woman at the Well Ministries in your app store or through our website at watwm.org. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash watwm. If you visit our website, you'll be able to subscribe to Bible Bits, a daily devotion written by Kim and delivered Monday through Friday by text message. Woman at the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father. And it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. To learn how to partner with Woman at the Well Ministries, please visit our website. Thank you to the gospel group Fudge Creek for letting us use their hit song, Happy Girl. We greatly appreciate your prayers. We are praying daily for our listeners. Remember that God loves you. You are loved. to have. Happy girl